Secretary, thank you for um, your testimony and your tenor here today. It's encouraging. Uh, I don't know if you've ever attended a funeral of an American worker who's lost their life in a workplace incident. Uh, I have. I've represented for 30 years an area of the Bay Area that has amongst the geographic and per capita greatest density of hazardous material f facilities, refineries, uh, and chemical plants. Um, almost 20 years ago, a constituent of mine, Michael Glansman, lost his life because a Fortune 500 company, Tosco, at that time was appealing over 100 citations issued by Cal OSHA just the week before. Uh, two of them, the most concerning that I always remember, that were at the root cause of this incident was that the backup indicators for temperature variations were outside the control room on the unit. Mr. Glansman this day was unfortunately the junior member. He was sent out to verify that they should shut the unit down, even though it turned out later under inspection that the written policies that instructed them to do that were being overridden by oral instructions. Mr. Glansman went out, and the second citation that was being appealed was that they re should replace the walkie-talkie he was using because it didn't work. We think the last thing he said was shut it down, shut it down, but we'll never know because he was eviscerated. That explosion not only cost his life, but raised the price of gasoline and diesel on the West Coast by more than 10 cents. A year later, another four employees of that facility lost their lives in a gruesome explosion and burned to death. We shut that refinery local government for a year and did a full facilities audit. And the result of that audit was very succinct. Corporate culture caused those deaths. So in that, that context, forgive me for being suspicious. When I see a department that's being cut by $21 million over its last funding of last year, OSHA, $11 million more than the administration asked for, and that you're staffed at a level that's consistent with the 90s, and it would take 159 years for your ins inspectors to inspect every facility in the United States. So forgive me for being cynical. But you can help me with my skepticism. Uh, in last year, on May 12th of 2016, uh, the previous administration uh, had a rulemaking that would instruct employee employers of over 20 employees in heavy industries like this to electronically notify them when there's illness or workforce injury. Seems like that's what you're after, is efficiency um, and, and better results. Uh, you have postponed that rulemaking. Uh, the website is up and capable of running as of August. We anticipate that over 300,000 reports will be in. We'll be able to track these incidents better, so Mr. Glansman's of the future will not have what happened to him. So I would like to know if you plan on setting this up and making it work effective December 1st, and if not, why? Uh, Congressman, thank you for the question. Let me just briefly respond. Um, I understand what your, your point that you're making, and I understand that because we had a similar incident in Miami, and that incident was prosecuted criminally. People died, a boiler blew up, there was a flash steam result, and people died, and it was prosecuted criminally. And so I am very much aware of the importance of vigorous prosecution, particularly, as I said earlier when addressing one of your colleagues, when violations are heated and when violations are willful. And so cynical or not, this is something that we take very seriously. With respect to the particular rule that you're addressing, we're looking at that rule. Um, we are balancing the issues of privacy because it was asking for some information that was very detailed and that identified individuals with the needs to get information so that we can um, engage in appropriate and targeted enforcement. Um, we are moving forward on that, but that does not lessen the seriousness which, which we will take instances in particular that are repeated and that are willful. And I'm perfectly fine referring them to criminal prosecution. As a matter of fact, in other contexts, I've already made clear to my staff that we're appropriate. They should refer things to the U.S. Attorney's Office, that I am more than happy to encourage U.S. Attorney's Offices to take our cases, because in addition to civil fines, where you have a culture that is non-compliant and that disregards safety matters, that can be a criminal violation. Thank you. Uh, I 